Hey guys, it's TF. Now, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm honestly just going to do as quick of a review as I can of the new Star Lord figure here from Thor Love and Thunder, that newer Marvel Legends series of the Korg series figures there. Uh, to be quite honest, I didn't know if I was going to get the rest of this wave, especially this figure. I was, I, I've had the previous 2017 versions of Star Lord, and I really liked those. I didn't know if I really needed this one. But I went to a shop recently around 4th of July, and they had a sale. Of 20% off. This was originally marked down to 20 bucks because the packaging was so bad. I've already thrown that away. And then with 40% off on the action figure section, I got this for 12 bucks. So it's a bit of a steal if I'm being honest. I don't think I would pay. I definitely wouldn't pay 25 bucks for this right now. 20 bucks might be a little steep, especially considering previous, you know, MCU Star Lords came with a little bit more than this one here. Honestly, until I find out what they're gonna do with the Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 series. I'm just hanging on to this one until the inevitable day of using this for parts. I think I'm going to use this for kit bashing, to be quite honest. But it's not a horrible figure, though, if you need a new Star-Lord and, you know, updated one in your collection. So I'm just going to run right through some of the stuff with this figure. First of all, we get Korg's right arm here, looking pretty nice with some nice detailed leather pieces on there. And it has pinless tech this time around, I believe, an updated sculpt bit from the previous... Uh, like MCU 10th anniversary cork that we got there too. It's also a little bit of a lighter tone of gray compared to that previous one. Other than that, this thing only comes with his blasters. He does not come with his uh, Star-Lord alternate uh, helmet head, which I have one, I have a spare one here from a previous uh, Star-Lord figure. So that's a bit of a bummer because the figure itself comes with even less accessories than previous ones. I mean, it's just one head, of course, you know. That's not to say that previous ones came with like 19 different accessories. They de For 25 bucks, they definitely could have packed in a another head like this into the packaging. And I don't know why they didn't do that. But anyway, as you can see, the same sculpt that we've gotten before, I don't think that the sculpt is bad at all. I actually like the sculpt on these. And they look good. I have a little bit of some different paint, like uh, like a yellowish, like beige, like mustard yellow almost color going on in there too. But it's mostly just a gray, flat plastic that it's molded in. And it has the system of holstering the blasters that it did from the previous one. You just slide the torso all the way around basically. Um, try and get that in there because that's eventually going to pop out the way I just swiveled that. I'm trying to get this back in bad boy in there there we go and then pop right there it all stays in there oh yep there it goes as you can see that wants to pop out a little bit zooming out as you can see yeah i mean you could tell they're stuck in there it's not the you know greatest system in the world but the one of the different the long coat version of the 2017 starler did the exact same thing as this one with that this is just a different coat is now so i not blaming it too much. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look amazing, but I mean, it's better than not having weapon storage at all, I guess. So one of the main reasons why I never really picked this up is that I don't really think it looks like Chris Pratt. I don't think it's a god-awful likeness. I do think it's better than some of the previous versions. Trying to focus up there, but uh, and I'm going to say this and some people are going to be like, no, duh. This looks more like Kurt Russell than it does uh some chris pratt yes kurt russell played his dad in the movie but i mean it still it doesn't really it looks it at least looks like star lord though um i think i think i might just like the previous heads a little too much i do think this one has a better likeness honestly let me pull it out this one here this is from a target exclusive or toys r us exclusive two pack before that closed down um I don't know which had the better likeness because this was right when they started face printing and this has gotten better over time so this is a five year difference as you can see here um there are some things i like about each of them i think i like the paintwork more in the new one but I, something about it, i think this one just looks a little bit more like chris pat to me if i'm being honest still this one's pretty decent i mean they have very different looking hair at this point uh this is definitely looks a little bit more orangish and brown compared to which i don't know what the accurate color is supposed to be and here's the very first 2017 version that doesn't have the face printing on there which is not a bad sculpt but as you can see the face printing you know definitely improves uh a face sculpt well actually i guess it depends on how good the face printing is 
This thing does look pretty good with its sculpt overall, though. The way that it has the sideburns and the facial hair and whatnot. The sculpt in the hair is not amazing. I'm sorry, the, the paint in the hair. The sculpt's fine, the paint's not amazing. In fact, there's no paint. That's what I was trying to say. But the eyes come through really nice. It has actually some wrinkles on the forehead and whatnot, so all that looks pretty decent. Then we get down to uh, the torso, which has this long coat here. It's a different coat. I'm not... Uh, Design-wise, this is not Hasbro's fault, but design-wise, I'm not sure if I'm digging this long blue streak going down here, but, I mean, that's the, that's the design they chose, so can't blame Hasbro for being accurate. This is also a piece that can be removed, this belt right here. So actually this looks really nice with some of the uh, silver paint on there. A little bit of detail, some like buckles almost on the back. And they actually have like a matte red here and then they have like a glossy red up here to make it look more like leather. So that's really sick honestly. The rest of it down here is just, there's no paint apps. As you can see, there's just a little bit of like lines and wrinkles sculpted in the coat. We have new pinless tech though. So that's cool. And this is a, uh, we have some nice silver and uh, gold right here, silver gold, on the uh, shoulder pad here, which is very much glued on here. Uh, but it, you know, the way it is done, it, you can still move this arm around without it being too restricted, as you can see. When you peel this back, this is, I, I honestly, I don't know why they did it like this, but this system, and it's kind of, you can't really see it too well because of this. This new vest overlay is covered uh, I mean, the, you're you're not going to be able to take the jacket off is what I'm trying to say. It's because when you do, look at that. That is kind of ugly looking. And this doesn't have pegs, so you, you would have to cut this off, basically. Um, but the under, you know, the, the actual chest is the same sculpt as the previous one with those lines and ridges in the sculpt, as you can see there. But the actual, like, gold and, like, dark red and brighter red on here actually looks pretty decent. Uh, I forgot to mention, you know, we have this bracer right here, which has some nice brown and gold. Same thing going on here. This is all actual a sculpt one piece here. It's like bronze, orange, um, gold, I should say. Excuse me, bronze and gold. Looking really nice. And these hands, I don't know if they're reused from these hands here. I don't think they are the exact. They might be a different sculpt. But, um... The actual brown gloves, like fingerless gloves here, are actually pretty decent, except when you peel back, this is one thing I noticed, you peel back this finger, and there is no consistent, uh, like, skin tone painted on the index finger, and I assume, yep, the rest of the hand there, too. It's not, you're not going to notice it too well, but if you look close enough, it might bug some people. That's just one thing I wanted to mention. It doesn't really bug me all that much. When we get down to the lower torso, it is the exact same sculpt that we got, which this arm is out of the way, and I'm getting in the way, uh, with the previous Star-Lord there. So I didn't change anything there. I didn't really need to change anything there. Again, until we know what's going on with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I'm going to wait and dismantle this figure eventually, maybe use the, the pants, because even though these things stick out here, which can be very distracting, um, I mean, you could just sand those down if you really needed to use these pants for a different character. It does have lots of nice lines and whatnot sculpted around, but we don't have pinless tech this time around since they had pins in the previous time. That's what the back looks like. You can see, they actually do have some details, uh, like some the like wrinkles sculpted on the back of the legs too. The boots are also reused from previous Star Lords with the more paint variation. There's some light brown into the dark brown sculpt and some silver on the front uh, of the shins for the buckles. Now we did look down towards the actual top of the feet. And it's just a dark brown sculpt. And the shoes look pretty decent. And then that's what the bottom looks like. So, uh, yeah, you know, decent amount of new to differentiate this version with the previous one. Uh, but there's also some a good amount of reuse. Let's move that out of the way from the previous one, too. Before we do the articulation, I'm doing the 360 and... I'm going to zoom in really quick, pop this off. You can see they don't have the new articulation scheme, which I get why, because, you know, they're just reusing a body mold. But if you really wanted to, there you go. This head sculpt still fits on there. Yeah, it pops on. Look, And it looks very good with it, too, honestly. So if you have extras of this head lying around here, which if you bought any of the previous, like if you got bought multiples of the previous version, like the different times they released it, 
you got some of these lying around. So you can use one of these extra heads for that. So that's sick. Articulation here is even more basic with previous Marvel Legends since it doesn't have the new, uh, you know, the ball peg system like some Marvel Legends do, uh, do now. I just realized there's a silver piece here as if it's supposed to be, you know, the earpiece for his mask right there. So that's cool. And there's a little bit of silver paint that I did not realize that. It's very minor. But anyway, swivel at the head. It does have a hinge and the back of the collar gets in the way a bit. But theoretically, it's actually... It's also really tough, so uh, I think it's really stiff. So that's as far as I can go right now doing it. Downward is a little bit more like that. It looks like there's a lot of dangerous space going on here with the uh, the neck there, so I got to be more careful with that. Arms go all the way around here, and then they do go in and out. It does not the greatest with this soft plastic piece going out here, but you get it. You know this goes out even more. So we do have an upper arm swivel. I think I already mentioned it goes all the way around here. We do have double jointed elbows right there. Looking nice. Swivel up the wrist as well as a hinge at the wrist here. So back and forth. It does have an ab crunch that actually doesn't get in, you know, this soft plastic piece doesn't get in the way too much actually. Um, I say that now, but the back, going back is not the greatest. Um, do have, I think the jacket also gets in the way too. We do have a, um, Waist twist, legs can go out that much. Not really back at all, but they do have splits. Then we do have an upper thigh swivel. Damn it, double jointed knees that's really hard to move around. I think I, yeah, I mentioned that thigh swivel already. We also get the boot swivel here. Feet go down and up, and then we do have a bit of an ankle rocker. Quick size comparison to the left black suit, Spider-Man from Marvel Legends on the right. First ever version of Black Series Mando there. As you can see, this character is just about as tall, maybe just a tiny bit shorter than the black suit Spider-Man, depending on you know where you're sitting, honestly. Uh, but it is going to be a little bit taller than Star Wars The Black Series figures. So if I'm being quite honest, it's not a horrible figure. I just don't find it entirely necessary, especially if you have the previous MCU Star Lords. Now, if you like this new look, then yes, definitely get it. Uh, if you don't have a previous Star Lord and you need one, then I, at this point, I would get one as well. But really, the main reason why I got it is because it was so cheap. You know, I've, just in case I am going to build the Korg, build a figure, I have to build a figure piece now. And it was, you know, it's going to be nice for parts that if I potentially might need in the future. So that's, that's honestly really the only reason why I decided to pick up this figure. I'm not going to, again, destroy it until we find out what's going to happen with the new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 wave whenever that comes out but until then I don't think this is entirely a necessary figure unless you need to build the Korg piece and you just need a brand new Star-Lord for any reason that's pretty much it thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already comment down below just think about the figure what you think about the review leave a like share my extra friends follow me on Instagram for more content over there and I'll see you guys later